Hey, what's up? Welcome back to this new video. This one is paper 3-1, which is the same as 3-2 as well, of November 2012 of A-level math. Now, with that being said, obviously, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. Question number one. So here we have to find the set of values of x satisfying this inequality. Now, first observation, we have x on both sides. We have modulus on both sides, so we can just square both sides. You will have 9, x minus 1, square, less than 2x plus 1, square. Now we can expand one by one. You will have 9 over here. That will be x square minus 2x plus 1, less than 4x square plus 4x plus 1. Expand, you will have 9x square minus 18x plus 9, less than 4x square plus 4x. Plus one. Now send everything to the left hand side because we want to simplify this equation. So you will have 9 minus 4, that should be 5. Minus 18 minus 4 should be minus 22. Plus 9 minus 1 should be plus 8 less than 0. Okay, so now we have to find the critical values of this equation. So let's find out. We have what? We have 5 x squared minus 22x plus 8 have to equal to 0. Let's try to factorize. So we have 5x and x. 8 is 4 times 2. To get minus 22, we have to have minus 20 and minus 2. Minus times minus is plus, so we confirm it's plus here. It is good to go. Now, x will have to be the value of 2 over 5. x will be the value of, of 4. Now, finally, using the number line, 0 here, and this is the value of 2 over 5, and this is the value of 4. Now, by observing the coefficient of x squared, it is positive. We know you will have to have a minimum shape. Now, we want this to be below 0, so below will be below, which is, this is 0, below, you'll have only these values right here. Right, so hence, x will have to lie between this one, and this one. And this is your answer for question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. We have to solve the equation, which means finding the value of x correct to 3SF. So one by one, let's see well, how can we simplify these ones. Uh, well, so I have 5 power x here. So we have 5 power x minus 1. What is that? It is simply 5 power x divided by 5 power 1, right? Now, one thing I can do for now, I can say, well, let me let y equal to 5 power x to begin with. You will have y on top, divided by 5, is equal to y minus 5. If that makes sense. Now, what I can do, I can uh, cross multiply and see what happens. You will have y equal to 5y minus 25. I can send this over here, this over here, you will have 25 over here, and that will be 4y. Because 5y minus will be this one, right? Now simplify. So y will be the value of 25 divided by 4. But now we're not trying to find the value of y, we're trying to find the value of x. So replace this back, y is 5 power x is equal to 25 over 4. Now as you can see, the x is a power. We have to bring this down, how? By using log on both sides. So log of this one is equal to log of this one over here. Now, let's use the laws of logarithms to bring this down. You will have x over here. That will be log of 5 is equal to log of 25 of 4. So x will be the value of log of 25 over 4 divided by log of 5. We have to provide the answer correct to 3SF. So log of 25 divided by 4 divided by log of 5. That should be 1.13865. Correct to 3SF should be 1.14. This is your answer, correct to 3SF. Okay, cool. Now, yep, that's it. That's the only value we have. So x will be 1.14 for question number 2. Now let's move on to question number three. So here we have to solve the equation for the value of theta 
Uh, but, uh, but as you can see, here we have theta plus 45, and here we have theta minus 30. So we have to be able, be able to expand those ones, expand these ones to help us solve this equation. Now, obviously, there's a formula for that, and I hope you guys know this because it is important right here. For example, let's say if I had sine of x plus y. If you were to expand this, that will be what? That will be sine of x cos of y plus, of course, cos of x sine of y. You will have this. Similarly, for this one, if you have cos of x minus y, that will be cos of x cos of y minus sine of plus actually become the inverse sign here. So sine of x and sine of y. Here you go. So you have to use this expansion to help you out for this question. So one by one, here we have this. So sine of theta plus 45. That will be sine of theta cos of 45 plus cos of theta sine of 45. Now we know these two are exact values which are 1 over root 2. So that will be 1 over root 2 factorized. You will have sine of theta plus cos of theta. How about this one? Similarly, we can expand this as such. You have cos of theta minus 30. Using the formula here would be cos of theta cos of 30 plus sine of theta and sine of 30. Now what can we do? So this will be exact value, exact value as well. We should note this root 3 over 2. This is just half. We can factorize half outside. So you will have root 3 cos of theta plus sine of theta. Now, so once you have this, put them back into your main equation. Let's see what happens. So on this side, you will have 1 over root 2 sine of theta plus cos of theta is equal to 2 times this. They will cancel out with this. So you will have root 3 cos of this plus sine of this. Now, as you can see, we have an equation in terms of cos and sine. Now, they're not together. We have plus in between, right? So what can we do in this case? As you guys know, we can divide by cos of theta everywhere. So you'll have this one will be the same. Cos divided by this will be 10, right? That'll be just 1. That'll be root 3 plus 10 theta. Now we can simplify. We can cross multiply. This time this will become, this will cancel out. You will have this over here. And this will become root of 6 plus root 2 tan theta. I can send this over here, all the tans together, you will have 1 tan theta minus root 2 tan theta is equal to root 6 minus 1. So finally, we have to make tan become subject by factorization. Tan theta is the same, so factorize, you have 1 minus root 2 remaining. That will be root 6 minus 1, so hence I can say, well, tan theta by definition should be root 6 minus 1 divided by 1 minus root 2. Let's see what does that give us root 6 minus 1 divided by 1 minus root 2. That should be minus 3.499. Now, as you guys should know, the value of tan is negative. Well, in which quadrant? By using the ASTC, it is negative here and here. Now, the question tells you, well, we need to find theta between the value of 0 and 180. So obviously we won't care about this one. We only care about this one. This is what? 180 minus alpha. The reason why I'm using alpha here is because I cannot I can't find the value of theta directly because it is negative. Whenever it's negative, it is not positive. I try to use some angle. You can call this A, B, C, whatever you want to call it, but to help me find the value of alpha. So first let's find this one. To find this one is pretty easy. It is tan inverse of the positive value of this one. Let's see what you will get. So tan inverse of this one will be 3.499. That should be 74.05. So finally, we have to find the value of theta according to the quadrants, which is 180 minus 74.05. Here you go. That should be 105. 
4.9. And this is your answer for question number three. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.